Now, one of the consequences of Russia's invasion of Ukraine has been on its people. Maxim Bondarenko and uh, Katerina Niskopolklona uh, are together, and the Ukrainian couple have taken refuge here in France. Maxim is an IT developer, and Katerina is a musician. Uh, great to have you with us here on nice France 24. Thank you. Thank you. Maxime, I want to start with you. You've been living in and out of France for close to seven years now. Of course, you lived in Ukraine during the COVID-19 pandemic. Your, uh, your mother and your aunt are with you in France, but not your father. Why is he not coming? Yeah, my father uh, didn't come for several reasons. Uh, I think the first reason, it's quite complicated to quit everything you've built, like your house, your cars old, and everything. How old is he? Yeah. How? He's 65 years old now. so it's, He could come if he wants to. Yeah, he could come, but also it's not very easy. And I think he also believes in the liberty of Ukraine and that with the help also of Western countries, in the end, we will be able to win this war. So he's quite sure that in Kiev it will, it will be okay and that the whole Ukraine will be free later. So. Does your mother, do yeah. you worry about him? Do you try and convince him to come? Uh, yeah, I spent a lot of time convincing him to come, uh, and finally I convinced my mother, and but I couldn't convince my father because uh, uh, he's a professor at uh, university in Kiev, so he likes his job. He continues to pay his taxes, and in some ways he sees this, uh, he sees it like a way to support Ukraine in this difficult moment. And of course, he believes a lot of our liberty, and um, he expects that it would go better soon. Katerina, let's bring you in, because you were born and raised in Donetsk. Yeah. Your mother is Russian, yeah. your father is Ukrainian. Yeah, my mother comes from Russia, yeah. But she was raised in Ukraine. Yeah. And, but, and but we have family in Russia, so actually, yeah. Are you still in touch with them? Uh, not a lot, no. And your, your, your family, your, your little sister, is yeah. still in, uh, are yeah, still in Donetsk? Yeah, Donetsk. Do they, do they want to come out, to get out? Actually, it's a quite a complicated question. So I try to convince them to to go out to to leave Donetsk for eight years, uh, like actually when the occupation started. But it's too complicated for them to leave everything, as Maxime said. So if you're building something all over the years, it's so hard to abandon your house, to abandon your your life. So. Actually, it's like this, and it's my personal pain because I I cannot see them much. So that's like this, and now I think it's it's worse. Can I ask you what what was it like growing up in Ukraine, having you know a Russian a mother who was born in Russia and a father who was Ukrainian? No, it was absolutely normal. Totally normal. Yeah, nor totally normal because my mom that she raised uh, she was raised uh, in Ukraine mm. in the Soviet Union, so. I was actually absolutely okay. So I've never heard something like um, we're Russians or something like this. So we spoke Russian mm. uh, in my family, but like two years ago, I switched to Ukrainian completely. And now I'm, I speak with my parents in Ukrainian and that's all right. You said you have family, some family still in Russia. Are Is your mom in touch with them? Are you in touch with them? Do they know what's going on? Are they getting the whole story? Yeah, actually, they know what's going on, I think. What they can... Um, how they can get the information actually from the Russian channels. Yes, some of this uh, information they try to stomach because for them it's kind of like uh, out of the blue because it's weird actually because when the occupation in Donetsk started, so it was obvious uh, there was Russian invasion, but they didn't. some of them didn't believe them. Some of them call that like some conflict, inner conflict in Ukraine. Mm. Yeah, they called my mom and they said, we're so sorry that it's happening to you, but okay. So they, they, they're being well informed. Yeah. They because can't. not everyone in Russia is being well informed. Yeah, but yeah, they're informed, but I'm not sure that they have all the information. Ma sure thing. Maxime, how has it been, you know, for your for your mother and your aunt to get the necessary documentation here in France for people who don't know France can be kind of complicated when it comes to paperwork. How, how have your, your experience been? Yeah, uh, with a big chance, they came to Paris and I was there since, uh, since a while, so I could help them with some documents. And we're also very grateful to the volunteers who gave the, their house to my mother and aunt. So the Gregory, the volunteer who helped us, he gave his house with four apartments to the Ukrainians instead of renting these apartments. So he helped us also with the documents, providing us the kind of uh, justification of the fact that we live there at his house. And also it was quite quick. We 
we we managed to do it in three hours in the French uh, prefecture. So that's that's yeah, so unheard of. It was <laughs> quite kind of fast, mm. and uh, I think it it's it helps a lot if there is somebody who can help you, who can come with you, and who can speak French, and it helps a lot. And of course, also it's a big thanks to volunteers and to the organizations who helped to to even get here because you know we crossed the Poland Poland Germany and France to get here by car. Mm. So uh, there was a guy who helped us to get here by car as well. So I think with the uh, help, with solidarity of people all around Europe, we we managed to help Ukrainian people here. And my mom and my aunt uh, were exactly the case. And yeah. Katrina, you've, you're 26 years old. What, how long do you think the situation is going to last? Do you envision your your time here in France will be for a couple of months, a couple of years? What do you think from from what you're seeing? I have no idea, but I'm quite a pessimist about here about it. Actually, are you? Do you share that too, Maxime? Uh, I think uh, it depends on what help we can get today and uh, how how the public opinion in Europe and in Ukraine can uh, can be formed. Uh, against this aggression. If today we're all together against this aggression, I think this war can end quickly. Uh, otherwise, it can last. You know, when when I interviewed someone in the early days of the war, someone who was in Ukraine, a young girl who said she felt alone and that no one was helping her. But, you know, the, the world was helping her. From what you've seen, what has happened, how the Europe has banded together, NATO countries have banded together to help Ukraine. Do you feel, do you still feel Ukraine is alone in all of this? No, Ukraine is not alone in all of this. So people, yeah, they're trying to help and that's that's obvious. Yeah, I just wanted to tell also that um, even if the war, like the actual war ends tomorrow, we understand, we should understand that there is a lot of job ahead of us because uh, it's a lot of job in people's mindset, what's what happened to them. So they sure they should have like proper help after all this happening because that's that's the all these atrocities that they saw is kinda kinda be like treated like this. So we we should understand this as well. So we, in this uh, we in this situation we need European help as well. Uh, I, how to treat with this, how to deal with this. I can imagine how you feel about the Russian leadership, so I'm not going to ask you, but when it comes to Russian people, how do you feel? Uh, I think we felt Russian people is the same as some part of us here and in Ukraine. During a very long time, we felt under the propaganda of Putin's regime. That's the problem, yeah. Yeah, and this propaganda, it's it's a very precise, it's about, it's what about, it's what I call it, what about is, but what about NATO? What about your president in Ukraine? There is always, they're always moving the point from their aggression, from their president to someone else, that someone else is guilty. Uh, despite when you see the reality, you realize that it's Russian aggression. So could you blame the people who are, who are blind? I don't know. I, I don't have an answer to this. Well, do, you, do you think that there can still be a diplomatic solution to this conflict even now, over two months after this war has began? It's quite a complicated question, I think. Yeah, I think um, it should be, actually should be treated like from the diplomatic side and from military side as well because it's the war. So we can, it's, it's not like a lot of people like calling this like little crisis in Ukraine. It's not a crisis. It's not a little crisis. Yeah, it's like large I mean, the, scale war. The, so the one thing we've, we've seen, it's how the crisis in Ukraine has impacted the world. Yeah, you know, we've actually. had protests in, in places like Peru because of fertilizer prices and wheat prices in Ukraine. I mean, it's impacting the world clearly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so, so what, how do you, do you, think you can convince your family to come because you know Russia is now shifting its focus in this war to the east yeah. uh, Donetsk is going to be in its sights uh, what it's are your impossible actually right what? now it's impossible because that's our, like large scale mobilization there hmm. and my dad he's like 52 so it's impossible for him to leave so they're, they won't let him out and my mom she doesn't want to leave my dad so it's kind of like complicated thing and what about you? Do you have, do you have friends uh, still in, in Donetsk? Have they left? 
Yeah, my friends, mostly they live in Kiev, they live like in Kharkiv, they live in, um, like, not Kharkiv, right now they are moved to another city. Uh, they live in Lviv, so they stay in the air, so they try to deal with this. And Maxim, what about you, your friends? Uh, because you're obviously off military age, you're here in France, you're not uh, there, clearly. Have people gone back to help? Uh, you mean people went back to Ukraine? Yeah, exactly. Uh, some people went back to help. I know many Ukrainians uh, here in France uh, who are fighting for liberty, who are doing manifestations uh, on the main squares of Paris, uh, who are doing uh, big uh, work on social networks to, uh, to, to, to fight Russian propaganda. Mm. And uh, there are many people who help with money, with donations. It's not only Ukrainians, it's also French people, mm. uh, American people, British people, European people. Uh, all the people are trying to help, and i never seen so much solidarity before that. Mm. Uh, many Ukrainians uh, are coming back to fight. I have friends who came back to fight to Ukraine, the left France, and who came back to fight for uh, for territorial defense in Kiev. And how do you think Vladimir Zelensky has handled this whole crisis? There were, I think there were a lot of, uh, there were not a lot of expectations for Vladimir Zelensky as president from uh, from part of Ukrainian society who were like... Uh, because he was uh, an actor. Before. Yeah, he was an yeah. actor and some people were quite uh, skeptic about what uh, Vladimir Zelensky will bring despite he got a lot of support from our nation. But since the war started, uh, when he refused to to leave, to, qu to quit the capital, to leave to Poland, uh, the public opinion shifted and he became a national hero. So now it's more about solidarity of all political parties, if about solidarity of the whole country. So now there is no political fights or no question about Zelensky in Ukraine. It's more, we are, but yeah, we're still true. asking ourselves a question but that we'll still be a democracy after the war. And uh, of course, if there were some errors during the war, I think our society will, will give a good estimate to these errors and vote for him or not after. But I think his popularity is, what, over 90% or yeah, something? For it's now, he's very popular, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I'm impressed how he's holding up because I actually I'm seeing how his face changing, like, every day because it's kind of like I when see he the was, stress When he was in Bucha, I saw his face change. Uh, Maxime yeah. and Katharina, we're going to have to leave it. Thank you so yeah. much yeah, uh, for joining so us on the program. Thank, thank you. you.